What's up you guys? SciStyle Carry here and I'm stoked you turned in for this one because today I'm going to be offering up the most comprehensive tutorial for MX vs ATV Legends available on YouTube. In this video I hope to cover literally every single thing you need to know to be as fast as the pros in MX vs ATV Legends. We have a whole lot to unpack here so let's just get right into it. First up, bike selection is actually super important in this game because the bikes do handle differently amongst the various manufacturers. The Honda CRF 450s are super popular in the game. It's definitely the most popular bike amongst the top players. So if you only want to buy one bike pack, definitely recommend picking up the Honda pack. Bike setup is super important on this game. I'll tell you what I run, and I do believe this to be pretty close to a perfect setup that works well for Supercross and or Motocross. However, and I cannot reiterate this enough, if you want to figure out what bike setup works best for you, you need to go into time trial on a track you are super comfortable with and change one setting at a time to figure out how that adjustment actually affects your performance. That's what I did, and that's how I came up with a perfect bike setting that works for me. So about my bike setup, I use engine plus three acceleration because you're really fifth gear pinned in the game. So acceleration out of the corners is much more important than top speed. Clutch boost level three, more on that in a second. Chassis flexible three to hopefully absorb some impact when you inevitably send jumps to flat. For suspension, I'll run soft two for motocross outdoor national tracks, but I may go as high as plus three for supercross tracks just depending on how flat and smooth they are and then my preference for traction in the corners is going to be plus three super sticky tires it helps me stick to some of those ruts and all these different corners and last but not least brakes three hard because you just want them to work you know you want to be able to stop if you need to you got to be running manual shift in on this game and my personal preference is that using the joysticks to shift by clicking them down is probably the best way because your thumbs never leave the joysticks anyway. However, if you have a controller with paddles, paddles are probably going to be the best means of shifting on any dirt bike racing game. Simple fact of the matter is why you should be running manual shifting. You are smarter than a computer. See, look at you watching a YouTube video, getting high praise out there. You know when you need to stay on the rev limiter or when it's time to actually shift up. Jumping is one of the main reasons you need to be in manual shifting. If you run automatic shifting and you're approaching a jump near the rev limiter, the automatic shifting will bump you up a gear at the base of a jump, so you're going to bog the engine up the lip of the jump, basically slowing you down the whole way up the lip. You'll jump way shorter than you should have, spend more time in the air than you should have. Got to be running manual shifting. Another very, very important reason you should be running manual shifting engine braking is a great way to slow down you can only engine brake if you're using manual shifting as an example if you're coming into a corner fifth gear pin super fast and you just rapidly shift down to second gear the change in gears alone slows the bike down without actually using the brakes engine braking is often better than using the brakes because the tires don't slide nearly as much so you can focus on maintaining momentum through the corners instead of kind of slipping and sliding into and through the corners. Just use manual shifting. It's absolutely necessary if you want to compete with the fast guys in public lobbies. And the last tip before I talk about actual gameplay is that you need to be using the chase cam far with the customizable camera on so you can zoom back a little further away from your rider. Common advice when racing in general is to look where you are going Zooming the camera out further behind the rider allows you to see further ahead of you so you can pick your line accordingly. It also makes the game run smoother even if Rainbow Studios swears the camera doesn't affect the physics. Tip number six is to abuse the clutch boost relentlessly. The clutch boost on this game is basically like a mini turbo button. You should clutch boost every time you land a jump every time you exit a corner, sometimes in the middle of the corner, every time you shift gears, every time you start a race, every time you get back on the bike after a crash, and honestly, clutch boost a couple of extra times just because it's that little mini turbo button. It's there. Go ahead and abuse it. To quote the great Fat Joe, lean back. Uh-huh. 
lean back. Dirt bikes are rear wheel drive, meaning all the power comes from the rear wheel. While this technique is not necessarily true to life, leaning back in the game allows the rear wheel of the bike to gain more traction so you accelerate quicker. Basically, when you lean back, you're getting the rider's weight over the back tire so the back tire stays planted on the ground and you're constantly accelerating forward. I find myself leaning back pretty much any time I'm trying to ride in a straight line and you don't have to lean all the way back. Leaning just 20 to 50% back, depending on how bumpy the terrain is, should help you keep that back wheel planted and constant acceleration on any straightaway. Smooth is fast. Crash in practice, not the race. If you can't hit the quad quad every time, just go ahead and do the double, triple, triple. Crashing in resets waste a lot more time than taking a slightly slower line. Tip nine, and we're finally talking about rhythm sections. To quote the great Lil John, get low, get low, get low, get low, get low to the window. Seriously though, roasting fat quads might get you laid, but it ain't going to put you on the top of the podium, which is where you get paid. So really, in order to compete with the fast dudes on this game, you're going to need to use and abuse the scrub feature on pretty much every single jump. While it is easy and fun to get huge air on this game, roasting jumps does nothing good for your lap time. And while the scrubbing mechanic on this game is actually relatively simple, it has been pretty difficult for me to master. In order to scrub on this game, all you do is click both sticks the same direction, so either both sticks left or both sticks right, before you take off the jump, and then you push both sticks in the opposite direction once in the air to even the bike out. And please do note that you need to let off the gas in the air for this mechanic to actually work properly. So again, scrubbing in this game is fairly simple, but scrubbing on this game has a tendency to push your rider sideways off the jump in the direction you scrubbed. So if you lean both sticks left before takeoff, your rider will drift left in the air. So what actually took time for me to get comfortable with doing scrubs is learning to hit jump sideways if I intend to scrub. Basically, if you want to scrub really hard left off a lip, you're going to want to kind of go slightly to the right up the lip, so that way you take off kind of going to the right, scrub left, it brings the rider a little bit to the left, and then you end up landing perfectly centered. It should be noted too, if for some reason you can't scrub a particular lip, if you hold both sticks up as you're going up the lip, it will also make you jump lower and a little bit shorter, though not nearly as good as the scrub mechanic itself. So, while the scrub is the most important in-air mechanic and the low line is almost always the fastest line, there are a couple of other things you need to know to make sure you ride as smooth as possible in every rhythm section. First, if you need a little extra boost to actually get over a jump, hold both sticks down on approach and then flick the sticks up as you take off. This will make you jump higher and farther, but it may be necessary if you come out of a corner poorly or if you're recovering from a crash. Second, and this took me a little while to learn, is actually super important. You can make slight adjustments to your trajectory while you're in the air. Basically, if you double tap both sticks up while you're in the air, the rider will lurch himself a little bit forward, giving you a couple more feet of distance. Alternatively, if you double tap both sticks down simultaneously while you're in the air, the rider will come back to the ground slightly quicker, reducing your overall air time and distance traveled. This also works. You can double tap both sticks to the left while you're in the air and it'll make your rider go a little bit left or you can do it to the right. Um, just in general, fine tuning your trajectory while you're in the air. Um, so the goal as always to land as smooth and as fast and carry as much momentum as possible. So if you sense you may be coming up short a little bit on a jump, just click the right and left stick both up twice at the same time. It'll add a couple of feet to your jump and hopefully you'll catch that backside perfect. As you enter the whoops section, hold down on the right stick and up on the left stick. The goal is to get the back wheel to hit the top of as many rollers as possible so you're keeping a constant acceleration forward and for some reason down on the right stick and up on the left stick works best. Honestly, no clue why, just trust me on this one. 
Cornering on this game is a relatively simple concept, but definitely difficult to master. Basically, if you hit a rut or a berm in the corner, you should press both sticks the direction you are turning to lean the bike over and turn quicker. For tighter corners, you want to press both sticks 100% all the way the direction you're turning. For longer corners, you may only want to press the sticks 25 or 50% in the direction of the way you're turning. The general concept of cornering throughout every type of racing is to maintain maximum momentum through corners by slowing down at the entrance, hold your speed in the corner by leaning with the corner in the game, and then you need to accelerate out of the corner as quick as possible. Hashtag clutch boost. If a corner has a rut or a berm, you're going to carry more speed railing that uh, berm or rut. And just like that, we reached the last piece of advice in the video, which is just play with faster people. Beating up on noobs might feel great, but uh, you're not going to get any faster that way. So go play against some actually fast guys, get humbled a little bit, then try to follow their lines. Ask for tips or pointers. Jo join their party. Maybe they're willing to do some 1v1s and teach you a thing or two. In general, the MX vs. ATV Legends community has been super welcoming to me. And I'm sure most people will be glad to talk to you if you're remotely normal. So always feel free to hit me up if you see me online. But that wraps it up for this one. I hope you enjoyed. I hope maybe you learned a thing or two. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Other than that, I'll look forward to catching you all very soon. Peace, y'all.